this has been a crazy week, hasn't it? Uh, I was watching the, the news, which I do very, very little of, and I watched the local network, and of course, I want to find out what the weather's going to be, and uh, so it was interesting, the two newscasters, uh, a man and a woman were side by side, and as they were standing there, uh, she began to say, how chilling the news this week, you know, with our president, and she used, I think, the word chilling about three different times. And uh, so after she was done talking about all the negativity that's going on and the suppositions, et cetera, what, what, what's going on, and, and uh, so the, the guy beside her then sta- stands and says, oh, by the way, uh, uh, the latest news uh, uh, is starting to affect the mentality of people. People are now starting to get depressed because they're hearing all the news about the politicians. And so the next thing he said was, therefore, they who look at the mental health are telling you and I to turn your TVs off. (laughs) Let that sink in just for a moment. And I went, okay, click. (laughs) Because I missed the weather. (laughs) You get on your phone, you get it quicker. And I'm, I'm watching this, and it's, isn't it sad that they have to tell people, uh, 911, they were exp- explaining that also to watch these planes hit over and over again as they kept on rehearsing and playing and playing it. Uh, depression, anxiety began to affect their hearts and minds. And I know one thing, I have uh, turned it off a lot. I, I watch very, very little, and you say, well, you need to, you need to be current. I get the ADD version of it, and I don't know a lot of what's going on. I'm just waiting for them to tell me, um, is my president going to be in office or not? I pray, and, uh, and it really burdens me. It's, it's sad. It's, it's, I'm, I'm, what, Kathy, when you were sharing what's going on with the abortion in our, in our nation, um, you know, I'm sitting, and I just I wanted to read the text in, in uh, 1 Timothy and uh, 2 Timothy where he talks about that in the last days, troublesome, uh, literally these piercing times are upon us. And we know the closer we're getting to, to rapture, um, the lost world will become, and one of the words in, in the text deals with, they become fierce. And that's what we're seeing is a mindset that is so aggressive, uh, more so than many of us were raised with. And we, we pray for our country. We pray, as I have many times, for, for us to, to unify and for us to understand what is going on. And the lost world in that text uh, comes to a place where they were called that which is very good. They're considering it very evil. And the position that we hold as Christians, uh, it is good because God says it. Our Creator has said it. And so with this, this last month, we've been talking about the mind. And I want to conclude today in a very brief way, uh, something that I've experienced and many in this room have experienced. And I, I talked about the subject of depression early on and talking of the statistics that most cases, as they were talking, there were more women that would come forward expressing that they are dealing with the subject of depression. And since I have started this uh, series, I have had uh, almost all men come up to me after services or call me through the week and say, thank you for sharing this because I am one of those men that suffer in, in very bad ways. One man in particular came up and he said, I tried to talk to my father about this. And he said his father shut him down, and so therefore he just bottled it up, and that was it. So all these years, and I'm not trying to be braggadocious in any way, he said, but pastor, you're the first pastor I know of that actually addressed it. Secondly, it it was as though you were talking to me. Everything you were talking about, what Elijah was experiencing, he goes, that's how I feel. That's how I have felt. And there is a sense of the internal part of the feelings, and we're going to have a message down the road about not trusting them, but they are still real inside of us. Emotion, this is the emotion. We have anger, we have these anxieties, we have these things inside of us, and we have joy. I mean, these are all things that are set inside of us, but this, this sense of loneliness, 
this sense of I'm the only one. This sense of I don't even want to eat. I just want to curl into a little cave and die. Praying to God, Lord, it's enough. I'm done. I'm washed out. I got nothing left. I just want you to take my life now. And only those who have gone into a dark place in a fetal position, you're just curled up and wanting to die. You don't care about food. You don't care about anything. Your mind won't shut down with the negativity. And this is what Elijah was experiencing. And some would say to him, just get over it. You just called fire down. You just took on the prophets of Baal. Look at all that God has done through you and for you. But there are these moments that something triggers inside of men and women, this sense of of negativity and nothing's worked out. Everything is, is worthless and it seems like it's empty. So you just want to stop it all. And that's what triggered Elijah was one woman, Jezebel, who said, you're going to die by tomorrow. You took on my prophets and you killed them. Now you're going to become like one of those. And he's looking at the nation of Israel and he said, the nation of Israel that has the law, that should be loving the law, loving the Lord, they've seen the victories from God because of keeping the law, have gone into the temple, uh, they've gone into the, the altars of God, they've taken them down, they're after God's messengers, the prophet, including me, and I'm like the last one. So Lord, since I'm the last one, you might as well just kill me. Boy, is that depressing or what? This poor guy is so hopeless. I was reading through men's retreat. By the way, thanks to Dave and all the guys that, uh, and Nathan, the guys that preach. I'm telling you what, guys, you missed two messages that were absolutely dynamic. Wish you could have been there. They weren't recorded. Great messages by, by Dave Clark and, and Pastor Nate. Uh, just great messages. Very relevant to today. And, you know, I was talking to them a little bit, too, about Psalm 142, when David begins to pour his heart out, because David went through it, too. And he said, I looked on my right hand, and nobody's there. And it's like, everybody's forsaken me. So this is very common with those that are in the battle for Jesus. You may not be going through it, And it's not because you're not serving the Lord. You probably are serving, and maybe you don't go through it. But I guarantee you, you get into the midst of the battle, you're going to go through more oppression because the devil doesn't like you. And he doesn't like what you're doing for the kingdom and for God and to to honor God. He's going to try to squelch that, put water on that, water it down. And poor Elijah's fire that was called down seemed like it was all watered. And now it seems like the flame is gone No zeal. The prayer is I'm done. So today is the conclusion, and this is what I couldn't wait to get to, and I am limited, but I want to just express as best as I can a few major points that I didn't have a chance to yet address. God knows, and God is patient. He was patient with Elijah. He was patient with David, and he taught all of the above incredible patience, perseverance, getting through this thing. So God sends his angel. The angel of the Lord is actually mentioned. The person of Christ comes to begin to minister to this great prophet of God that is known as the greatest prophet in the Old Testament. And Jesus comes and he gives him bread and he gives him water. He says, listen, you got a journey and you need strength. And this is something that God gave him, not man. Elijah had been fed early on by the ravens, remember? And now here, God himself, again, is providing for him because there needs to be the nutrition. He quit eating and drinking. He just wanted to fade away. And sure enough, God says, not time yet. I'm not done with you yet. There was a time, God says, okay, we're done with you. We're going to take you up. But this was not the time yet. Because he has some other messages messages for the king of the north. And he needed to be the one that was going to deliver that message. That's over in the next book. Elijah, I'm not done with you yet. I need to feed you. you got a journey. It's going to get you through 40 days and 40 nights. 
This is my food. And when we receive the nourishment, the bread of life that comes from the Word of God, it nourishes us and helps the inner man to continue on when you just want to quit. When you seem like you are uh, outnumbered, that's what Psalm 142 uh, brings up. Uh, Marlon, you brought up about Kathy, and she's in a room, and so many times we seem like we are outnumbered when we are trying to do what is right. And that's what David brought up, that same thought, I am outnumbered by the enemy, but guess what, God, but if you fight for me, they can't stand up. So Elijah is thinking he's the only one. Would you read with me in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, and starting at verse number 13. We'll read this text together down to uh, verse number 18, and then I'm going to give my final points. 1 Kings chapter 19, would you stand with me out of respect of God's word, starting at verse 13. It was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him. There's the voice of God. Well, we need to hear, hear the word, right? And said, what doest thou here, Elijah? Not negative, but questioning, shouldn't you be somewhere else? Shouldn't you be going further in this journey? So he said to him, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. God speaks again. Verse 15, and the Lord said unto him, Notice this next word, go. The thing we want to do is stay, go nowhere, because going means I'm going to engage with people, circumstances, more negativity. I just want to stay here. And God says, no, you go. And I want you to return to the way of the wilderness of Damascus. You can see earlier about the wilderness. And when thou comest, now this is what I want you to do. Anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. The third thing is next. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, and Abel Meholam, Meholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it came to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael, that's the new king, shall Jehu slay. And him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu, shall Elisha slay. Now notice verse 18. This is where he's looking to him about all these accusations and feeling all alone. Yet, I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. Father, if we look at your word a couple of minutes, bless this time. Thank you for what we've experienced this day with you. Thank you for your word. Lift spirits this day, and we'll thank you for Jesus' sake. Amen. You may be seated. What we have learned up to this point, God's intervention in Elijah's life started with the nourishment, two times coming to him to give him strength because he was weak. Bread, water, 40 days, this testing he got through. God also, as we talked about last week, came to him with these loud... Uh, uh, actions, this vision he gives him, talking to him about the zeal and the signs that he, Elijah, had done for God, but God was saying, listen, I'm not in those. No, instead, it was the still, small voice that God says, that's what I'm in. That's what I use to change the inner man. It's not the lightning, it's not the strikes it's, it's, not, it's not the sounds, it's not the earthquakes, it's not of the catastrophe, the noise. It's the stillness of the Holy Spirit of God in the inner man begins to bring them to repentance, bring them to the knowledge of God, bring them to the place of understanding God's care for them. The mercy that is extended, the salvation that he can do is not done by the outward, it's done by the inward voice that God, through the Spirit of God, uses the Word of God to permeate this soul to change the heart and mind that they will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. The same thing for you and I. As we go through these hardships, it's the inner voice that's that one that strengthens us. He says, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed, built up every day, not one-time deal. 
It's never a one time and it's done the rest of your life, ladies and gentlemen. Every day you need to be strengthened inside because we have no idea when we put those feet uh, on the floor, when we get up in the morning, what we're about to, to hit. And so God says you have to have that every day of your life just as we die daily to self and we go forward for the kingdom. Today we see the verses about this concept. He, God, reminded Elijah that he still had a specific purpose here on this earth while he was still here. He was the prophet the prophet that was for the kingdom, for what God was trying to do, and he said to him, you are going to be the the one that is going to anoint the next king of the north, the northern tribes, Israel. It is you, Elijah, that I need to get on your feet because I'm not done. I have a specific purpose for you, and therefore I need you to go and anoint the very next king of Israel. There's another thing that I need you to do, and that is this. Prepare your replacement. Elisha, this is first mention of him in verse number 16. There is a man that I want you to go get, and I want you to find this guy, and he's going to be anointed to be prophet in your place. You're not done yet, but you're almost done. I do want to bring this up. For all of us as Christians, I think it's something that we have neglected in the pulpits, and myself included, I can never emphasize this enough, is that, ladies and gentlemen, as Christians, whatever position, whatever you're doing, it's, it's a great thing. But if you have not pre- prepared a replacement, you failed. If you have no one that, if you died today of a heart attack, that can pick up and take over what you have been doing, they have no idea... Um, you failed because I sensed back in the day this mindset. When I'm gone, they're going to miss me, and they're going to realize all that I did, and they are going to see how important I was to them, and that's the wrong mindset. We should have somebody be somebody prepared that they're never even going to miss us. They're going to forget about us in a week or two. Rightly so. Because it's not about you and I. It is about the king and the kingdom and the purpose of Jesus Christ. And when we put ourselves there, um, we failed. Jesus said to the men, it's better for everybody that I leave. Because if I don't, the Spirit of God is not going to come. And you guys are going to be doing greater works than I have done. That's what Jesus said. i got to go to heaven. I'm still busy, but... You are here. By the way, Elisha did double the miracles. It was good that Elijah was out of here, but not yet. So as long as you are here, understand God has a reason and a purpose for you. So old people crack me up. I can say that because they tell me I'm not one. And so, so as I talk to old people, and I've talked to a few people this week, I go into places... And I will look at little grandmas and grandpas, and I'll go in, and as sincere as they can, they look at me in the eyes, and they say, I just want to die. I don't know why I'm here. I can't do anything. I can't get out and about. I used to do this and this and this. I remember the old glory days, and now I can't do a thing. I'm sitting here, and I'm depressed. I just want to die. You say, they don't tell you that. All the time. You, I'm, I'm in church. I'm, I'm not lying to you. And it's usually one of the first things that they'll say to me. Okay, Carl, why am I still here? I can't do anything. And that's when the preacher has to get into the encouragement and help them to realize, no, you are here for a reason. Trust me, in the Lord's good time, you're not going to be. Okay? Going to happen. 10 out of 10, die. Unless the rapture happens. I had one preacher, I said that, and one preacher said, unless the rapture happens. And I'm like, absolutely true. And that, and that is true. We, we didn't get that memo sometimes. 
and we think we're going to be 25 forever, and everything's going to stay the same. Nothing stays the same. Okay? So here's what happens. When we have a lack of abilities, we're restricted, and we don't like where we're at. We lose the contentment that Paul talked about, and we begin to allow the mind to take us to this negative place. If you're here, listen, if you're here, God is not done with you yet. You say, but I can't do the things that I used to. I can't either. I can't hear anything. i got to use a stupid hearing aid now to hear. It's crazy. <laughs> you can't read these things. They, they don't, I don't think they magnify them enough yet. Man, the eyes are going, and we get all this. Yeah, we're going. But guess what? I keep going because God wants me here, and this is what he's called me to do. You say, but you're here. You're still doing these things. One day I won't be. And then you got to listen to guys like Nathan <laughs> and Clark and all these other guys. And they're going to come in and they're, and, and they're going to take over. And that's what I'm preparing. And it's a good thing. Nothing stays the same. So as long as I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, that day that you're in a nursing home, make it a nursing home ministry. Start giving out cards, start saying, hey, can I pray for you about anything? Rather than, oh, my life is horrible. Let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> that was Elijah. It's depression. This is the sign that every communication is, I hate my life and I want to die. So we got to come up out of this, folks. You are here for a reason yet. So here's what I tell old people. Can you still pray? Well, yeah. Do you understand that God says, I pray for you, Paul said, I pray for you, the labor of prayer, night and day. Do you realize how much we need the prayers of the grandma and grandpas? We need that. It is where the power of God comes. You're here for something, look for that, and you're going to do well. So that's what God had to tell Elijah, I'm getting long. Second thing he was to anoint his replacement Elisha is going to be the one he is going to be taking over for you. So what he does then in verses 19 and, and following, um, after, uh, I forgot one point, and that is he did need to remind him that he's not the only one. Because constantly, I'm the only one. 18, chapter 18, it begins. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. And the bottom line is, no, he isn't. And by the way, neither was David. And by the way, neither are you. You're not the only one. And there are those that are in the midst of the battle. And when we start thinking, I'm the only one that is bringing holiness and righteousness and, and such on this earth, uh, you have a real ego problem. So, no, you're not the only one. And God is using people around the world in incredible ways. No, we are not the majority. Christianity is not the majority, and it never has been. But we are here. We are maybe a remnant, but we are here. And we as a remnant, though we be small, can be stronger. And man will see that it is God's strength upon us, not our own strength that is accomplishing anything. God uses minority over and over again, not majority. So 19 to 21 he tells him it's time to get Elisha. So he finds Elisha, and uh, he throws that mantle, probably that skin, fur thing, you know, that he had around him. He threw that to him. It's like, okay. And, and the, the concept is like, um, remember how you know, Joseph was given from the father to him, this coat? And that's the thought of a father-son, that I, you are now my, my son. You're my one I'm going to mentor you're the one that I'm going to pour my life into you and that you are going to take over my job just as a father when they pass, the son takes over. And so that's this concept. And it tells us that uh, Elisha then talks to Elijah and says, can I go home first? And by the way, there's no rebuke for that. He does. And he says, you know what I've done to you? And it's like, okay. And he determines that he's going to follow him. So he's, he's you know, out in the field. I love how God calls farmers. 
<laughs> so this guy's out in the field, he's plowing, you know, he's got like 12 ox all over the place, and he's using a couple of them, and they're all plowing along. Elisha said, hey, you're the man. So he goes, okay, let me go. So he takes these two ox, and one man said, probably the best ox. And he took those ox that he was, was using to plow, and he kills them, and he sacrifices them, and then he feeds his family with this. The thought is, in Elisha, I'm now done with my past life. I don't need them anymore. They are sacrificed to the Lord, and now I'm going to move on, and I have a brand new life now, and I don't need that anymore. That's the thought of missions. There are things that we sell and we get rid of and we just give them to the Lord because we won't need those anymore. And one day, all these things that we love here on this earth We will be giving up because we get to go to heaven. Constant. So he does arise and and goes to him. And the very last phrase in verse 21 is what I want you to see. And and ministered unto him. That is, Elisha ministered unto him. From this point on, Elisha was not alone alone. God fulfilled a man to be in this man's life to encourage him. He was the one that this word minister has to do of contributing. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to contribute to you that you're not going to be alone. So here's the lessons we learn. God is patient. God uses his word to confirm his care for us. He uses his Holy Spirit to comfort and to change us. God gives us direction and purpose. God expects us, when we are down and we are depressed, to rise up. Elijah needed to be doing more for God. You have to rise up and you have to go forward. Why all this happens? Well, we are in a spiritual, a personal spiritual battle, just like Elijah was. Satan desires you and I to look only at ourselves and therefore to miss the mission of God. The depression keeps us from from, uh, influencing others that are around us, both saved and lost. So if this depression is holding you down, God is not using you to the fullest. It keeps you and I from going forward with the plan of God for our lives. And yet my last point is this. God still uses depression in your life because what we then are able to do, just like Elijah has taught us, since he went through it, we can go through it, that we also can minister to others. We can use, God can use us who go through this to minister to others who are going through the exact same burden. And that's why 2 Corinthians 1 tells us about the comfort that you and I get from God when we need it. And the purpose is so that we can comfort others with the exact same comfort that we got from God. And so God wants to use you in your weaknesses. Some of you will never experience depression. This has been a series that you couldn't wait to be done with because it's like, this has nothing to do with me. I don't even know what you're talking about. Life is so good, you're probably 16. <laughs> Everything is perfect, you know, and, and it's like, I don't even go through any of these things. It's like, let's get on to something happy again, and, and, uh, but the bottom line is there may be a day, and I'm hoping that this will maybe help you if and when it comes into your heart and your mind that you can refer back to Elijah and you can remember some of these uh, main points. Father, you are amazing. Your comfort is amazing. Your gift of the Spirit of God who dwells inside of us for that very purpose of comfort is real. Thank you for showing us the heart of Elijah and the burdens and the weaknesses that this man goes through, went through so that we can understand when we go through it that you're not leaving us alone. As lonely as we feel, we are not alone. Your presence is there because you have promised I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. You have promised us that you are that very present help in time of trouble. Lord, thank you for who you are, your character, and how you've revealed yourself through your word. 
lift hearts that are burdened. Help Christians in this room. Maybe now they're going through it. Maybe they will go through it. Lord, may they not stay down. May they not wish and pray for death. May they rise up. Continue the journey. May they go forward for your kingdom. God, you want to use us. And Lord, as we're seeing this world around us, we do not know how long it's going to be till you return. But Lord, until that time, may we go forward. Because you tell us that the gates of hell will not prevail against your church. May we go forward militantly to be able to reach many with the gospel of Christ. Lord, I do not know hearts, but you do. If there are some here this day that don't even understand about Jesus and how much he loves them and died for them, Lord, work in their hearts now, right now, this moment, that they will believe that you gave your life, Jesus, for them, you rose again for them, so that they can be forgiven of sin, the penalty of sin will be taken away, that they can have eternal life. Lord, if they just call on you now, just simply believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for them and rose again, that he did the work for them to be saved. God, that they will call on you right now, this moment, for that very purpose, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. Prayer, we thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for those who have worked so diligent and so hard to bring us to the place of worship this day. For those who have worked behind the scenes, those in nursery and children's ministries, Lord, we thank you for their diligence in, in working. I pray that you'll take us home safely now, Lord. Bring us back when the doors are open. Thank you for, for Kathy and Lord, just her burden uh, that she has shared with us. Continue to bless her, the ministry that you called her to. Uh, we thank you for the Brummels and the Stutzmans and, and just a host of others that are so burdened about this ministry that we have. And God, I pray that you'll cause it to flourish, that you'll provide for the needs, that you will raise up many leaders, and that, Lord, we will be able to impact lives around us and our community. Thank you again for this day. Use it for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are